we begin making our way through the prophet Hosea, which is um, one of the minor prophets, uh, the only one of the minor prophets actually to be from the northern kingdom of Israel. You remember that after the reign of Solomon, uh, Israel was now split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom being mostly Judah, and the northern king being, kingdom being all the other tribes. And uh, they were at odds with each other, and very often were fighting and the like. And so the northern kingdom was actually destroyed uh, uh, much, uh, maybe a couple centuries before uh, the Babylonian exile, um, where the Judeans were then brought out and then were brought back. And there's never been that renewal and that drawing back of that northern kingdom as a kingdom of the uh, tribes of Israel since then. And so when Hosea is bringing God's message to that northern kingdom, it's a promise even to today that needs to be fulfilled. And he says, I will allure her to my heart and lead her into the desert. I love this, this talk as God is saying how he is the husband of Israel, which we also now interpret as the bridegroom of the church. That he doesn't just care about the southern kingdom of Judah, but also the northern kingdom that's been dispersed throughout all the world. And he says, I will espouse you to me forever. I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity. Sounds like saying it over and over and over again. What's that? Well, three times means that it's, I'm saying this the, uh, to the highest extent. I was, I was told recently that um, in Hebrew, there's no word for very type of thing. That you don't say, well, this is, what was it, the old, was it Sears? You know, good, better, best, right? <laughs> uh, that there was the way that they said, well, good and then if they wanted to say better they'd say good good and if they wanted to say better or best they'd say good 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 so they'd say it three times as a superlative and so he's saying i espouse you in the superlative in the highest form i am calling you to myself to be my spouse i will espouse you in fidelity this great love of god for his people. Translate that to today, his great love for us. And you shall know the Lord. And when we talk about the biblical sense of knowing in terms of uh, a spousal relationship, we're talking about the marital act and God saying, that's the intimacy with which you shall know me. A couple weeks ago, you may remember uh, my homily as I was reflecting on the letter to the Galatians where um, St. Paul is talking about freedom. And today, of course, being Independence Day, we can focus on that importance of freedom. But freedom is not just being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. It isn't just freedom from tyranny, although those, that is important. But freedom truly is Freedom for excellence, and ultimately, as St. Paul looks at in the, in the letter to the Galatians, freedom is the freedom to love. This is where we find our excellence, is in reaching beyond ourselves in love. And first we see this in, in our love for Almighty God, and then also in our love for those around us. And God is saying, even when you have strayed from me, even when you have sinned, even when your love has been very little and not enough, I will espouse you to myself. I will draw you back. I will lure you into the desert. No longer shall you be called my, 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 my Lord, my God, my up there somewhere, you know, the bad, uh, bad relationship. But rather, she shall call me my husband, calling us into that deep and intimate relationship. But so often we try to keep God out there. Because if we allow him in, that's tough. That means we have to change. It means I can't just live the way I want to. 
Not because God has put down laws. Well, okay, well, I'll follow those external laws and then maybe he'll, he'll reward me at the end of my life. No. But rather, he's calling us to love. To fall in love with him. And love then goes beyond just the rules. Love says, I want to give you everything. I want to surrender my whole self to you. As I've said at some, some weddings, uh, love is not a 50-50, or marriage is not a 50-50 uh, uh, agreement, whatever the word is. Uh, it's not a 50-50 agreement. It's 100-100. I'm not giving 50% and you're giving 50%. We both have to give 100% in order for this to work. And God is saying, I'm giving 100% of myself to you. And I want you to have the freedom to be able to give 100% to me. And he, he, he asks us. He asks us for hard stuff. He asks us for the stuff we're not ready to surrender. He asks us for the energy we don't have to give. And yet he will give us the energy if we just step, step out in surrender. Step out in trust. May we truly experience that true freedom. The freedom to allow God to enter in to know us deeply, to espouse us forever, to espouse us in right and justice, in love and in mercy, to espouse us in fidelity, and the freedom to be able to give our all back to Him. <laughs>